Hey, Dustin here. Today, we're gonna to show you how to build your very own Bulldog. For our Bulldog build, we're gonna be using the motherboard that comes with it, the GA-Z170N Wi-Fi from Gigabyte, along with an Intel Core i7-6700K processor, the Corsair liquid-cooled hydrographics graphics card, our Neutron XT SSD, and 16 gigs of our Vengeance LPX DDR4. Building Bulldog is fairly straightforward for both experienced and novice users, but there are some nuances that we'll highlight as we go through the build. First, remove these four screws securing the bracket, then pop it off the back of the case. Next, remove the two screws from the back of the chassis that secure the top panel. Then slide the top panel back and then lift it up and off of the chassis. And make sure to disconnect the cable connecting the LEDs. Now, if your Bulldog has the motherboard pre-installed, you can skip the next couple steps. Install the Intel backplate to the back of the motherboard with the indentation wrapping around the two screws on the rear of the CPU socket. Then, holding the bracket in place, flip the motherboard, install the provided LGA 115X standoff screws. Tighten the screws all the way, but note that the backplate may still be loose. This is normal for this step. The backplate will tighten once the cooler is installed. Before you install your motherboard, first snap the motherboard's I.O. shield into the back of the case. Next. Align your motherboard with the pre-installed standoffs inside the chassis, then align the included H5SF L bracket with the Mini-ITX motherboard mounting holes. Use three of the included H5SF mounting screws to secure the bracket and motherboard to the case. Then use a single motherboard screw to secure the remaining corner of the motherboard. Finally, install the three H5SF mounting posts. At this point, you'll want to refer to your motherboard's manual for instructions on how to install a CPU and memory, as well as where to connect the front panel headers. If you purchased a Bulldog with a pre-installed motherboard, the following instructions will show you how to install and connect all the different components. First, connect the front panel headers according to the specification listed in your motherboard's manual. Next, connect the HD audio cable from the case to the header on the motherboard. After that, you'll want to plug in the USB 3.0 header from the case into its corresponding connector on the motherboard. To install the CPU, we first have to unlatch the lever and then open the socket. Pop out the piece of plastic protecting the socket. Then, line up the notches on the sides of your CPU with the ones in the socket and place it into the socket. Finally, for the CPU, Close the top part of the socket, then relatch the lever, securing the processor inside the socket. To install your memory, first open the clips on the sides of the memory sockets. Then line up the memory with the slot, gently sliding it in until it locks into place. Do the same for the second DIMM. Next, connect the EPS SFX 12V 8-pin cable to the power supply and the 12-volt connector on the motherboard. If your motherboard's 12-volt connector is 4-pin, like ours is, the cable is designed to split into two pairs of 4-pins. Next, connect the SFX 24-pin cable to the power supply and the 24-pin connector on the motherboard. Connect the Y cable for the case fans to the black fan header on the motherboard, listed here as sys fan and then connect the SATA cable to the SATA port on the motherboard. Remove the protective cap from the H5SF block. Insert the top of the H5SF water block into the Intel mounting bracket. Note that the tubes on the block swivel and can be rotated back and forth to ease installation. Align the bracket and pump over the standoff screws and use the thumb screws to secure all four corners. Note that on motherboards with components like capacitors next to the CPU socket, you may need to slide the block away from them on the standoffs to ensure good contact with the CPU. Then connect the three pin cable from the block to the Bulldog fan splitter in the front of the chassis. To mount the cooler unit of the H5SF, first connect the unit's four pin fan header to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. Next, ensure that the tubes coming out of the block are pivoted facing back and form a U-shape in their connection to the cooler unit. Align the cooler with the L-bracket mounting posts and secure the cooler on the three posts. Note that you may have to apply some pressure to get the cooler unit to sit properly on the standoffs. Now we're gonna install the graphics card. It can be a little tricky in a case this small, but we'll walk you through it. The first step is to remove the drive tray. Remove the four screws holding the drive tray in place, then, Tilt and lift out the drive tray. 
Next, you'll need to unscrew the retaining clip on the rear of the case to the right of the expansion slots and remove the clip. Then unscrew and remove the two expansion slot covers. To make things easier to see and make it a little bit easier to actually install, we're gonna temporarily remove one of the modular cables. This gives us access to the two PCI Express connections on the power supply. Now we'll also need to connect the power cables for the graphics card. If your graphics card has a radiator, we'll need to install that next. Slip it into the case under the cables and gently push it into place. Note that you may compress some power supply cables. This is normal. To secure the radiator, you'll need to flip the case on its side. Line the radiator screw holes up with the case, then use the accessory screws included with the bulldog to secure it in place. If the fan on the radiator has to be connected separately, now's the time to plug it into the fan header in the front of the chassis. Connect any power cables needed to the graphics card. Next, peel the backing off of the adhesive on the foam block. This block is placed on the bottom of the chassis and affixed to it to provide a support for your graphics card. Make sure that this does not interfere with the graphics card fan. Open the clasp on the PCI Express slot on the motherboard. Then, insert the included PCI Express ribbon riser cable. Next, fold the graphics card over like so. Connect the ribbon to the graphics card, then move the graphics card into place. Screw the graphics card into place, then replace the retaining clip. Route and compress the cables, then replace the drive tray on top of the graphics card. Resecure it using the four screws. Now, snap your SSD into the SSD caddy. Connect the SATA power cable to the power supply, then connect the power cable and the data cable to your SSD. Connect the power lead for the fan hub to the bottom of the fan hub, then connect the other end to the SATA power cable. Now before we close up the Bulldog, spin the fan to make sure that no power cables are interfering with the fan blades. Reconnect the internal LED cable to the cable in the top panel. Replace the panel on top of the chassis and slide it into place. Resecure the two screws that hold the top panel on. Replace the back panel and screw it into place, and there you go. And there you have it. You've built your very own compact 4K gaming ready Bulldog system. For additional information about Bulldog, you can reach us at Corsair.com bulldog or drop us a line on our forums. Thank you for watching.